what is the pectoral area and what is the scapular region. So this is the thoracic cage, right? Yes. yes. Thoracic cage. And these are the two bones, which are important bones, which are part of your upper limb. Yes. So they are known as the bones of the pectoral girdle. So this is one is the anterior one, which is the clavicle, and this is the posterior one, which is called as the scapula. scapula. So these are the two bones, very important for the uh, movement of the upper limb because of these bones, especially the clavicle, the upper limb enjoys 3D movements, all the movements as this clavicle keeps the upper limb away from the trunk so that you enjoy all the movements in the, all the three dimensions like anterior posterior directions, okay, laterally and even anterior posterior so circumflexion movements. So because of this position of the clavicle, position of the clavicle, so helping the scapula, so kept in position over the posterior surface of this rib cage extending from second to almost seventh ribs, okay. So even this clavicle keeps the scapula away from the midline. So that it keeps it laterally to which you have the articulation of the humerus, articulation of the humerus. So these are the two important bones, the scapula and the clavicle, so which we call them as the bones of the pectoral girdle. So the pectoral region is just the area in the anterior bone, or, yeah, so anterior to this thoracic cage, the, the chest region. So this part we call it as the pectoral area, pectoral region. So and what are the muscles present in this area? Okay, taking origin from the bones of the thoracic ear like ribs and the sternum going to the upper limb. So they are formed the muscles of the pectoral region. And I am talking about the scapular region. So the muscles which take origin from the scapula are inserted into the scapula. Which are related to your movements of the upper limb. So those muscles are called as the, uh, that region is called as the scapular region. Okay, got it? So this is what is the scapula, it is a triangular bone. Okay, triangular flat bone having mainly the dorsal surface, this is the dorsal surface and this surface. This is surface which is related to these ribs or the costa. This is called as the costal surface. Are you following? Yes. So you will be taken this uh, details of the bone again in a, a separate lab. But when I am talking about the muscle, so I will be telling some points about the bones. So if you don't understand the bone, it is difficult to follow the further lecture. That's why I am telling this point. Okay? The costal surface and the dorsal surface. On the dorsal surface, you have a, a process of the bone. This is called as the spine of the scapula. What is this called as? Spine. spine. So this spine divides the dorsal surface of the scapula into two parts. This fossa is called as supraspinous. Am I clear? Because this is above the spine and this is called as infraspinous area or the infraspinous fossa we say, okay. Supraspinous, infraspinous. The spine ends laterally in a flat process. This is called as the acromion process. What is called as? Acromion process. A-C-R-O-M-I-N, okay. Acromion process which articulates with the clavicle. Which is articulating with the clavicle. And similar, one more, a beak-like process, beak of a bird. See this from the scapula. Okay, this is called as coracoid process. What is this called as coracoid process? Coracoid, C O R C O I D. Okay, coracoid process, acromion process, and then the spine of the scapula. And even it is having this border of the scapula. What is this border? It is on the lateral side. So this is the lateral border. Okay, and this is the medial border. Medial border, and this is the superior border. As it is triangular in shape. A lateral border, a medial border and a superior border and this will be called as the inferior angle. Inferior angle. angle. A lateral border, a medial border. Okay. A spine, acromion process, coracoid process and here this cavity, see this? Or a fossa. Okay. So this fossa, a pear shaped fossa, this is called as glenoid fossa. What is this called as? Glenoid, glenoid fossa with which you have the articulation of the humerus. Okay, this is what is the humerus, the bone of the arm, bone of the arm. This is the humerus having an upper end, this is the head, okay, and this is the lower end. So head is, near the head you have two tubercles, can you see this? One is the greater tubercle and one is the lesser tubercle. 
and between them there is a group. See this? That is called as bicipital group. That is called as bicipital group. Bicipital group, greater tubercle, lesser tubercle, and this is the head of the humerus which articulates with glenoid force of the humerus to form the shoulder joint. To form the shoulder joint. So this is in brief about, about these bones. Okay. This is the oh, a few points about the clavicle also. This is the clavicle are also called as the collar bone. This is called as like the collars of the shirt on either side. So this is called the collar bone. Okay. So which is slightly S shaped, right? S shaped. Yes. Okay. English letter alphabet yes, S shaped. Okay. So medially it is convex, laterally it is concave. Are you following? Okay. So medially it is articulating with the sternum, sternoclavicular joint. Laterally it is articulating with the acromion process, acromioclavicular joint. Okay. Okay. So this clavicle length is divided into three parts lateral one third middle one third and medial one third three parts or you can say it as lateral half medial half okay yes so now with this brief idea about the bones in this scapula and the pectoral region now let's go to first the pectoral region as you said this is called as the pectoral region Okay, pectoral region. So this is the picture of the pectoral region immediately after removal of the skin in males. In females, you have the breast, okay, the mammary gland. But here it's the male. So immediately after removal of the skin, you find a big muscle. A big muscle is having a, a big origin, okay, and going to the humerus. So that is the muscle in the pectoral region called as pectoralis major you find you find two muscles mainly you find two muscles mainly that is pectoralis major and pectoralis minor so before going into the muscle first so first after cutting the skin and then you reflect okay what do you see fascia fascia so you have how many fascias two fascias two fascias right what is the superficial fascia and deep the next fascia. is the deep fascia. The superficial fascia is just below the skin everywhere in the body. Okay. So that is loose tissue, loose connective tissue. Whereas deep fascia, deep fascia, it is named according to the region where it is situated. But superficial fascia, everywhere it is called as superficial fascia. But deep fascia, they are named according to the regions where they are. It is thus, it is there throughout the body. It is named given to different part. Like in the pectoral region, the deep fascia is called as pectoral fascia pectoral fascia what is this deep fascia it is little bit tougher compared to superficial fascia this fibrous tissue covering the muscles and the structures other structures am i clear this is the fascia which covers the muscles so that the muscles are kept in position in a compartment like okay otherwise the, there is no proper position of these muscles or division of into compartments okay we'll come to that when you go to the different parts of the upper okay so the fascia the deep fascia is present in the pectoral region is called as pectoral fascia which covers the muscles like pectoralis major muscle pectoralis minor muscle and as after covering these muscles it goes to the axilla this is the axilla right so the same fascia when it goes to axilla it is called as axillary fascia as i said okay when it goes to arm it is called as brachial fascia so like that, okay. So the extensions of this fascia to the clavicle, it is called as clavipectoral fascia. Okay. So like that, the fascias are named. So after the skin, you have the superficial fascia and then deep fascia, which is called as the pectoral fascia. Yes. Fascia in the arm. Yeah. In the arm. In the pectoral region. Pectoral fascia. It is in the pectoral region. Pector that, as I said. The deep fascia is named according to the region where it is situated. Okay, here it is the pectoral region as it is covering the pectoral muscles. It is known as the pectoral fascia. As I said, the same fascia it extends over to the axilla. Now it is called as axillary, axillary. fascia, like that. Okay. So now coming to the muscles. So even you cut the deep fascia, exposing the muscles. The first muscle that you find on the pectoral region is the big muscle. So the muscles here they are called as pectoralis major and minor when you compare. How the muscles are named in the body? 
By location, by the shape, number of heads, number of heads, number of heads, then arrangement of muscle fibers within the muscle. Okay, they are named according to different classifications, like according to the names, according to the actions. Yeah. Yeah. So origin and attachments according to the attachment. Different ways the muscles are named, like. According to the attachment, like sterno, cleido, mastoid, we say. Sterno, cleido means the clavicle mastoid process. Sterno, cleido, mastoid. Okay? So now biceps, that means two heads of origin. According to the shape, according, for example, here trapezius. Because the trapezius, because the shape is trapezoid shape. That's why it is called as trapezius. So like different ways they are classified according to the shape, according to the action. For example, a muscle called as supinator because it supinates. The action is supination. Flexar muscles because they are named because they do flexion. According to the action, according to the shape, according to the type of origin, according to the number of heads, according to the arrangement of muscle fibers within the within the muscle, okay, so the different ways of classification, as it is situated here in the pectoral region, it is known as the pectoralis muscles, so as you have two muscles, then you compare the shape, I mean what is the size, one is bigger, pectoralis major, one is smaller, pectoralis minor, okay, and the other muscle which is just below the clavicle, that's what is called as subclavius, so these three muscles you find in the pectoral region. Anterior, okay. So that is pectoralis major, pectoralis minor, and club clavius. And even some authors, even they include a very big muscle that is the serratus anterior. Okay. Uh, some authors they considered it in scapular region. So, so this classification of the pectoral scapular, it is our classification for a better understanding of anatomy. It's not in the body like it is divided into axilla, pectoral region, or like that. So it is for our better understanding, we are dividing these muscles into certain groups. These muscles doesn't follow our rules, right? The muscles are there. We are dividing them into different parts so that we can understand it in a better way. Okay? For example, one muscle is there, that is serratus anterior. Some authors they include it in pectoral, some authors in scapular region. Okay? So now go to the first muscle, that is the pectoralis major. Just look into this picture. Okay? Pectoralis major. So now go to the, so any muscle in the body, how it is studied, under what headings you explain a muscle. So that is, so nowadays we are not calling as the origin and insertion, we are just saying attachments. So what is an origin and what is the insertion? Anyone know the definition? Uh, origin, yes. origin uh, where, the, where the muscle uh, attaches to the least movable uh, area. Origin movable. Least movable area. Usually the fixed part of the muscle is called as origin. The origin and the part of the muscle, the attachment which yes. moves is called as insertion. Is, which moves is called as insertion. But many muscles in the body that doesn't follow this rule. Sometimes what we call it as the insertion is fixed and the origin moves. But mm. well, that's why we are nowadays abolishing the words Attachments. like origin and insertion. We just call them as attachment. Okay. So now first the pectoralis major, origin or also called as any attachments. So any muscle will have definitely two attachments and the muscle will be, will be. What is the important fact about the muscles? Always, always, always a muscle crosses the joint. Otherwise there is no use of muscle. Why there are muscles in the body? Why the muscles are there in the body? Shape. What is the function of muscles? For the movement. movement. Where does the movement take place? The joint. Joint. The joint. So definitely the muscle has to cross a joint to do a movement at a the joint. Always all muscles in the all muscles in the body, they cross the joint so that they will have action on that crossing joint. Some muscles cross one joint, some muscles cross two joints, some muscles cross many joints. Okay, so always a muscle crosses a joint. Okay, so this pectoralis major muscle, the so-called origin, okay, usually which is fixed, so which is having an extensive area of origin, it arises 
from three points or three bones you can say okay number one from the sternum the lateral border of the sternum either side see here central bone this is the sternum right yes okay from the lateral border of the sternum okay so this is the lateral border of the sternum it's lateral border of the sternum and even from the medial half of the anterior surface of the clavicle medial half of the anterior surface of the clavicle here here and even from the wrist ribs ribs and costic cords that is the lower fibers lower fibers middle fibers and the upper fibers you can see am i clear yeah. so that is the origin and insertion look at the insertion very interesting so look at this picture as the fibers are going as the fibers are going they are not going straight they are not going straight they are twisted mm, yes. am i right yes. they are twisted so that so why i am explaining this point i will explain later so this lower fibers lower fibers they go posterior but the upper fiber that is sternal fibers and the clavicular fibers they are anterior but the costal fibers are going posterior so the insertion is u shaped like this it is u shaped anterior fibers posterior fibers so this insertion will go for the where is the humerus fold down fold down under the so this is what i said as the bicipital group the pectoralis major muscle will go to the bicipital groove of the humerus so crossing the shoulder joint so definitely it will have action on the shoulder joint okay so where it is crossing it is crossing anterior anterior to the shoulder joint so what actions you expect abduction abduction or abduction yeah so you expect flexion abduction yeah abduction flexion abduction no abduction abduction yes then other opposite to the abduction is abduction yes. okay yes. so you have so as it is crossing anteriorly it causes abduction yes. and i am sure what is this yes. flexion yes. see what happens when a muscle contracts when a muscle contracts what will happen it will shorten it will shorten right yes. the muscle is like this when it is shortens what do you expect let's so move front that is the flexion okay and then adduction maybe that is the action of this and even you can expect some fibers doing medial rotation also medial rotation so that is the action of pectoralis major and two nerves you find in the pectoral region so they are named according to the position one is medial and one is lateral so that is medial and lateral pectoral nerves what is that medial and lateral pectoral nerves will be supplying the uh, what is this uh, pectoralis the muscles in the pectoral region you can see that is main and pectoral major and minor and the artery is supplied sorry artery is one of the branch as well as i was explaining about the subclavian artery in the neck region for your batch or i don't know so there is a artery called as the thoracoacromial artery from the axillary artery so one of its branch called the pectoral branch of the pectoral branch of the thoraco acromial artery will be supplying this area and even a artery here runs that is called the internal mammary artery that will also be supplying the pectoral region am i clear okay branches of the internal mammary and pectoral branch of the thoraco acromial artery will be supplying the pectoral area am i clear this is how you explain a muscle you explain the attachments then the nerve supply blood action. supply action. then the action and if 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 there are any of the some of the clinical aspects you can add it up okay yes. pectoralis major muscle so next muscle pectoralis minor so you now you cut the pectoralis major muscle from its attachment from the costal fiber sternal fiber and clavicular fiber you cut and then reflect okay yes. then you see the pectoralis minor muscle you see the pectoralis minor muscle so that is the pectoralis minor small muscle compared to the bigger major. one it is major and it is the minor so many muscles in the body they are named as major and minor according to the size okay like gluteus maximus minimus medius like that okay so now this is the 
origin of or the attachment of pectoralis minor from the ribs, from the ribs, especially the third, fourth, and fifth, especially at the junction of the ribs with the costal cartilages. Okay, runs upwards and then goes to coracoid process. Now you know what is coracoid process. What is coracoid process? Where it is there? In the scapula. I showed you here. This is the coracoid process. From 3, 4, 5 go to coracoid process. That's why I told you the some details of the bones before beginning this lecture. Okay? So the coracoid process of the scapula it is inserted. Okay? So the action nothing much except it holds the scapula onto the posterior part of your rib cage and even when it contracts slightly pulls it forwards. Okay, that is the action of nothing much a big action about this pectoralis minor. And the nerve supply is the same pectoral nerve as I said, the medial pectoral yeah. nerve. The action as I said, the depression and protraction. Protraction means pulling it forwards. That is called as protraction. Okay. Now the last muscle that is the subclavius. Did you see there? That is the subclavius, very small muscle, which keeps the clavicle in position, which stabilizes the clavicle. That is the main function or the action of that. Uh, what is that? Uh, what is that? Muscle. Okay, as it is not crossing the joint, it doesn't have much movement. Mainly it is the stabilization. Okay, so that is the subclavius originates from the first rib goes to the a groove on the under surface of the clavicle. Groove on the under surface of the clavicle, there is a groove called a subclavian groove. Okay? So we learn it when you go to the clavicle bone. Okay? So that there is the insertion. From here to here, very small muscle. Yeah. This is the clavicle, this is the under surface. From here to here. Okay, a very small muscle. That is the subclavian. As I said, the main action is stabilizing the clavicle. So nerve is nerve to subclavius from the upper trunk of brachial plexus. At this time you don't know what is brachial plexus. Not yet learned, right? So yeah. No, no. Plexus means that is the plexus of nerves. Plexus of nerves which are present in the axilla. You will learn it in future classes. Okay. So now, as I said, one of the other muscle, a very big muscle. It's also known as the boxer's muscle. A boxer's muscle, that is a very big muscle, that is the serratus anterior. You will have a lab again on this. I will show you with the models there, okay, and even the uh, class netted specimens. The serratus anterior, a big muscle, some others, as I said, consider in scapula region and some in pectoral region, as it is taking origin from extensively from the ribs, okay. The serratus anterior, origin from the outer surface of the first to the eighth here to here. All these ribs will have the origin of the serratus anterior. Okay? So it is very close to the costal mar what is that? A rib cage. From here it takes origin and then goes to the medial border. See here. Close to the surface. Yeah. This is the lateral border as I said. Okay? This is the medial border. This is the dorsal surface and this is the inner side is the costal surface. It goes like this, exactly like my fingers. This is the serratus anterior, goes to the medial border of the scapula, inner side of the or the costal surface of the medial border, exactly my fingers, like this. It goes deep to the scapula and then inserted it. See my fingers tips, they are towards the medial border of the scapula, right? Okay? So that is the or attachment of serratus anterior. From the outer border of the one to eight ribs, goes to the Costal surface of the medial part of the scapula. Okay? Close to your rib cage. That is the serratus anterior. So, what do you expect when it contracts? It pulls the scapula forwards. That is called as protraction. That is helpful in pushing and punching movements. Pushing, pushing movements. Okay? You can feel your own body. So, you hold your fingers close to the rib cage and you move can feel the contract, especially in thin persons, okay? So that's why my advice, until you complete the musculoskeletal block, you have a big picture of, poster of any bodybuilder, like Arnold or someone, anyone, 
okay you post it in your room and look into all the muscles every day and revise about its attachment and actions okay so when you that is surface anatomy is very important so when you look at the muscle you should be able to identify okay so that is that serratus anterior attachment what is the attachment uh, yes, origin and insertion yeah what what explain it where outer surface of the first two like a grip and the other attachment is to the the middle costal surface of the medial border of the scapula costal surface inner aspect not outer aspect okay so what is the action as a set protraction pushing and punching movements okay so let us see here this is the costal surface of the scapula this is the extensive insertion of the serratus anterior okay and even and even uh, uh movement of the scapula see when this contracts like this especially the lower fibers this overhead abduction and even along with your trapezius see when it pulls the inferior angle inferior angle attachment you have it pulls it pulls it so that scapula is rotated up are you getting yes so the inferior border is pulled like this so that scapula turns upwards like this like this okay over head abduction up to this point it is by the deltoid abduction abduction from here see here this first 15 degrees is by a small muscle that is supraspinatus okay and from here to here it is the deltoid middle fiber from here over head abduction by the serratus anterior and then the trapezius muscle okay that is the action of the serratus center along with your pushing and punching movement so that's why it is called as the boxer's muscle nerve supply is by a long thoracic nerve that the action so as i said it draws the scapula forwards as in pushing and punching movements and even the overhead abduction so movement the classical movements is done to you the terms of movements yes. Yes, 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 yes. what is flexion what is extension yes, yes, yes. what is abduction adduction yes, yes. rotation movements okay so now you know the abduction abduction yes. is movement uh, away from the midline yes. away from the yes. midline especially in the upper limb here yes. so you have different degrees first 15 degrees one muscle and then 90 degrees the other muscle and from here to this is called as overhead abduction yes. okay there are different muscles so nerve supply the long thoracic nerve Okay, or also called nerve of Bell. So now arterial supply, long thoracic, lateral thoracic arch. So that is the nerve supply, the blood supply, the action and attachment of the serratus anterior. Serratus anterior. It's a very important muscle. So that is the picture again explaining the muscles. What I explained now till now. You can see here serratus anterior. See from the ribs going anterior to the scapula and inserting into the medial border. So see how close it is to the when you take a cut section of thoracic region. So this is the muscle which you see. So this is the rib cage. Okay, this is the scapula going anterior to the scapula and then inserting into the medial border. So when it this contracts, the scapula moves forwards. Okay. A cut section picture explaining you the serratus anterior. So sometimes what happens if there is any injury to this long thoracic nerve, long thoracic nerve, maybe of different regions. Okay, we we'll learn it when you go to the glass and uh, brachial plexus. Okay, especially the porters and all who are carrying a lot of heavy weight on their shoulders. So sometimes if this long thoracic nerve is injured, that gives rise to paralysis of serratus anterior paralysis means it will lose its action okay then when you, when you, uh, if you ask such a patient to push his hands forwards okay then the scapula will be prominent the medial border especially the medial border so giving us a picture like this can you see this the scapula so in this side it is paralyzed and then the scapula becomes prominent because that is not moving that is a center is not contracting okay when you attempt to move that 
So you will have the prominence of the medial border of the uh, scapula. This is called as winging of the scapula. What is that called as? Winging. Winging. So like the wings, wings, wings yeah. of angels coming from back. Okay. <laughs> so that is the winging of the scapula. The condition is called as winging of the scapula. When does it happen? When does it happen? Maybe an MCQ. Winging of the scapula is due to paralysis of serratus anterior muscle because of anterior of the long thoracic. Long thoracic. No, yes. Very good. So now next go to the scapular region. Scapular region. It should due to injury to long thoracic nerve. Long thoracic nerve, which supplies the serratus anterior. So muscles of the scapula. As I said in the beginning, which means the muscles taking origin from the scapula or muscles inserting into scapula. All those muscles are included in scapular region. So actually there are many details. It has to be a separate class, but because I don't know time concern or not, so it is included together. So as you will be taking again in the labs, what are the top, I mean some points which I left, leave here, it will be covered in lab, okay? Don't worry about that. So next is the muscles of the scapula as I said, the origin which take origin from the scapula. What are the muscles which take origin from scapula? Number one is subscapularis, okay. Number two, supraspinatus. Number three, infraspinatus. Number four, teres minor, teres major and latissimus dorsi. These are the muscles which take origin from the scapula. And even the coracobrachialis. There are other muscles like biceps and all, which are not mentioned here. Okay, so that because those muscles are considered in arm. Okay. So now the muscles which are inserting into the scapula, like rhomboidus muscles, which are again two: rhomboidus major and rhomboidus minor. Trapezius, then pectoralis minor, which is included in pectoral region. We already studied it. Then serratus anterior, you already studied, the levator scapula. So all these muscles are included in your, what is that? Scapula region. So the muscles, subscapularis, which are written in block letters, okay? That is the, what is that? Subscapularis, supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor, those four muscles, okay? So they are named as the muscles of the rotator cuff. They are called as the muscles of the rotator cuff. We look into what is rotator cuff later, okay? So let's look into these scapular muscles, what I told you now. So, this is the scapular region, okay? Immediately again, same like after reflection of the skin and phagia, you see the picture like this, okay? This is the picture, not this, okay? The first muscle of just below skin, what you find is the a big sheet of muscle. Sheet, it's like a sheet, not the bulk. It's a thin, flat sheet of muscle which is having an extensive origin. See here, almost all thoracic vertebral spines going up to the occipital bone. Occipital protuber. That is the extensive origin of the muscle trapezius because of its shape. Trapezoid shape, that's what is known as trapezius muscle. Okay? This is the trapezius. So when you cut this trapezius muscle and then reflect, you find picture like this. The muscles under cover of trapezius, like these are the rhomboidus muscles, okay, and then the muscles like supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor, teres major. And on the anterior side, costal surface, you have the subscapularis. You have the subscapularis. You follow? So now let's learn about these muscles one by one. Number one is trapezius. So this is a a separate picture highlighting mainly the trapezius muscle. Okay, let's look into the attachments. So that is the attachment of the trapezius muscle. As I said, from the external occipital protuberance, then the spines of cervical thoracic vertebra. Okay, so that is the origin of the trapezius. Insertion, lateral one third of the clavicle. Yeah, spines. So now we have the insertion to the lateral one third of the clavicle. Lateral one third of the clavicle. So anterior side you have the. So the, uh, leave it. That is you have deltoid and all. We we'll come to that later. Whereas your posterior surface of your 
the lateral one third you have the insertion of trapezius muscle here lateral okay trapezius muscle the insertion and along with that even it will go to the a spine of the scapula acromion spine yes. see here look at this area so so lateral one third of the clavicle from here okay then the acromion process then the spine like this spine acromion and the clavicle so like this this is the extensive insertion of the trapezius muscle or the spine of the scapula or the acromion process and lateral one third of the clavicle so that is the insertion of trapezius actually i had a video of all this dissection videos as this pen drive is not working so i didn't get them those videos if possible i will get show you in the lab okay the lab also there is no computer there when you get it repaired tell us how to yeah tell us the title of our lab Link, link the link of the video and the watch last time no no uh, actually it was an atlas video so i don't think that you find it in the internet because it's uh, what is that copyright act okay we, we can can't get it just memory and okay leave it so now go to the insertion and origin i explained so now the action so what do you expect the muscle is like this and then goes like this see see my fingers this side is the origin insertion is here mm. so when this contracts what happens elevate yes elevate the scapula the scapula moves like this mm. like this see this mm. okay that is same again overhead abduction mm. overhead abduction overhead abduction along with the serratus anti that is the important action of your trapezius and even abduction as i said so abduction beyond 90 degree that is what is i said as the over head abduction okay along with that you have the retraction of the shoulder like this as it is going from the posterior side to the scapula when this contracts it even retracts the scapula protraction retraction are you following yes two actions protraction retraction of the scapula and the very important action is overhead abduction okay so that is the action of trapezius the so nerve supply it is from the accessory nerve the spinal part of the 11th cranial nerve 11th cranial nerve that is the spinal accessory nerve so that is the nerve supply and then action so this again one more picture showing you the trapezius muscle on either side and even about the action So even see here, shrugging. What is, this is shrugging. So when you are moving both the shoulders back like this, adduction of scapulas, adduction of both the scapulas. I'm not talking about this adduction action. Yes, yes. I'm talking about the adduction of both the scapulas. Mm -hmm. The scapulas are like this. The movement of scapula towards the medial border. That action is by trapezius. Okay. So this is what is overhead abduction. First 15 degrees, 90 degrees, and overhead abduction. Okay. Try to remember this action. Very important. What are the muscles responsible for abduction? What is the muscle which is responsible for first 15 degrees, then 15 to 90 degrees, and then 90 to further? That is overhead abduction. We say. Okay. The muscles responsible for. Yeah. Yeah. Two, two muscles. All of them have. have the same function and it is shown there no supraspinatus it is for first 15 degree yes. and later it is taken up by the deltoid mm -hmm. deltoid means not the whole muscle mainly the middle fibers okay and then the trapezius and serratus anterior 90 beyond 90 okay. you want to give the picture yeah you want to give the serratus and the trapezius yeah together So now next muscle is the deltoid. Very very important muscle. A big muscle, very strong muscle. So what kind of muscle is this? Deltoid. What are the what are the types of muscles? Deltoid, uh, triangle. Triangle. How do you classify muscles? According to, According to the muscle number fibers. 
according to the chain? According to the arrangement of muscle fibers within a muscle. How do you classify muscle? Uh, deltoid. Yeah. yeah, very good. Ah, yes. uh, unipinnate, bipinnate, and multi pinnate, bipinnate, multi and circumpinnate. Uh, Can you give the examples for all these muscles? What are the examples for multi pinnate? Deltoid muscle, the middle fibers, the acromial fibers of the deltoid is the best example for multi pinnate muscle. Multi pinnate. Muscle. So why why there is such kind of arrangement? Why there is such kind of arrangement in that in this middle fibers of the deltoid, multi pinnate? Why there is such arrangement, multi pinnate? What? Because of its location. Yeah. Because of its location. Yes. What location? Where it located? How does it help? Why this such pinnate arrangement you see in the muscles? So where you find usually this multi pinnate arrangement? Usually the muscles, the muscles which where you need stronger action, more power, more power. Those muscles which need more power are the muscles which act against the gravity, the abduction. It is against the gravity, right? Yes. yes. So because even though you are holding a one kg of weight in your hand should be acting against the gravity. You need more power to lift that. Mm -hmm. The same 1 kg weight, if you are getting down, it's easy. Mm -hmm. But getting up harder. is harder yeah. because you are pulling against, you are doing the action against the gravity. gravity. So all anti-gravity muscles in the body, they are very strong muscles, the big muscles. Okay? And usually they have this system, multi-pinnate system. Well, how is the muscle? Uh, power is related to a muscle. But how does how does you increase the muscle power? Yeah. In general, no. All muscles contract. I am asking about if you want more power. Exercise. Exercise. Yeah, yeah. Some fibers, yes. yes. Then? Exercise, diet. Yes, exercise. What, what happens when you do exercise? Make it bigger. Make it bigger, flexible, more flexible. Make it more bigger as it's saying. So, the power of a muscle is directly proportional to, directly proportional to number of muscle fibers in a muscle, number one, and number two is size. the thickness or the size of the individual muscle fiber. Yes. Very important. The power of the muscle is directly proportional to the number of muscle fibers in a muscle and, and thickness. the thickness of a fiber. muscle fiber. So, if you have more muscle fiber in a muscle, definitely the power is more. Thickness, yeah. And even if you have yes, yeah. thickness of the muscle fiber is big, yes. then you have more power. Yes, yeah. So, always the muscle fiber number is fixed. Yeah. Is fixed. You can, so, when you go to a gym to build the muscle, the muscle size increases. So, as the muscle size increases, you will have more power, more strength. So, the muscle power increases. Out of exercise is just due to increase in the thickness of the muscle fiber, not the adding the up of the numbers. Yeah. The muscle fiber thickens so that the power increases. Muscle number, number of muscle fibers in the muscle is fixed. Mm -hmm. so when you go to gym or do exercises, you will be increasing the size of a muscle fiber. So when the size of the muscle power, I uh, mean muscle fiber increases, so definitely the muscle also increases in size. So to increase that thickness, you need to have more protein and all. So that's why you take diet rich in protein and all when you go to gym to build the muscles. Yes. So when the muscle is bulkier, bigger, muscle fibers are stronger and thicker, you will have more power. Okay. But the nature, nature what has given, it has increased the number of muscle fibers by such arrangement. How is the multi-pinnate muscle look like? What? How does the structure, what is, you see in the picture of the multi-pinnate muscle fibers? Yeah. yeah. Such, so, uh, what is that arrangement? So, there is a limited area. Yeah. Yes. You cannot increase the area. So, there is a limited area. Yeah. So, it is a calculation, it is a mathematics. How can you accommodate more number of muscle fibers in a limited area? Mm -hmm. So, that's why it has having such arrangement. Yeah. Like the feather, feather yes. of a bird, you know? Yes, yes. The multiple muscles. So, the area is limited. You can increase the number of muscle fibers by such arrangement. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So that is the arrangement of the nature in the muscle to increase the number of muscle fibers so that it will
will have more power as it is acting against the gravity, as it is acting against the gravity. So that is the arrangement of muscle fibers in the deltoid, especially the middle fibers. That is the multi-pinnate arrangement of muscle fibers. So now coming to the attachment, attachment, three attachments again. You have three types of fibers: anterior fibers, middle fibers, posterior fibers. Anterior, middle, posterior. So anterior fibers from clavicle. the latter one third of your, or you can say half of the clavicle. Middle fibers from the acromion process. See here, that's anterior fibers from the clavicle. Middle fibers from acromion. Posterior fibers from the spine. Spine of the scapula. So that is a cup-shaped muscle making the counter of your shoulder. Shoulder. Okay. That is the a big muscle. That is the deltoid. Originating from three locations: clavicle, acromion process, and the what is that? Uh, the spine of the scapula. Insertion. So it crosses the shoulder joint, goes to the deltoid tuberosity of the humerus. This is what is the deltoid tuberosity of the humerus. See okay, this? This is the deltoid tuberosity of the humerus. So that is the insertion. That is the insertion. So what do you expect? What do you expect the action? Anterior flexion. fibers here. Flexion. When they contract, flexion. flexion. Anterior, see here. When this contracts and is moved forward, that is flexion. Over the middle fibers, when they contract, abduction. Especially the 15 to 90 degrees. Posterior fibers, extension. Am I right? Yes. So posteriorly here. So don't, don't by heart or do like a parrot, you know. Whatever it reads, it rememorizes. Don't behave like a parrot. Okay, you read, understand the attachments. Okay, then definitely it is like mathematics. You know, if you know the attachment, definitely you can write the action. Okay, the muscle is taking origin from here and going here. So anterior side. When this contracts, it shortens. So what do you expect? You expect flexion. Similarly, the posterior fiber. When they contract, what do you expect? It goes posteriorly extension. Middle fibers. Abduction. Like this, you remember. Don't by heart. Okay. So that is the action of the what is that? Uh, deltoid muscle. Nerve supply is by the axillary nerve. What is the nerve supply? So axillary nerve. Time being, you have to memorize the nerves which are supplying these okay. muscles. Okay. So later, according to the branches and the region where they are present, you can name the muscle uh, nerves. So axillary nerve supplies the deltoid muscle. Okay. So that is the deltoid. See this muscle arrangement, middle fibers especially. See that? That is the multi arrangement. Okay? So yes, very important clinical use of this deltoid muscle. That's it. As the, it's a multi muscle, bigger muscle, thicker muscle. Okay? No much nerves and vessels there in that area. That's why deltoid muscle is chosen to do intramuscular injection. So the other muscle is gluteus medius. Okay? So that is the uh, clinical importance of this deltoid muscle. It is used to do the intramuscular injection. Next muscle, a small muscle. You can just skip it, no problem. That is the levator scapulae. If you read the, uh, what is that? Uh, attachment, it is easy to follow. No problem in that. The name only indicates here. The muscle is named according to its action. It is called as levator scapula because it elevates the scapula. So next is again same rhombiadus muscles. The two muscles because of their shape, quadrangular shape, one is smaller and one is bigger. They take origin from the spines of the thoracic vertebra and even from the seventh cervical vertebra, minor and then major, attached onto the medial border. On the dorsal aspect, make it clear here. On the dorsal aspect, whereas costal aspect, what do you have? Uh, just now I told you, no? This is the medial border of the scapula. Costal side, which muscle is there? Coxus muscle, serratus anterior is there on the costal aspect. On the dorsal aspect, you have these rhombiadus muscles. I told you, no? The serratus anterior is inserted into the Medial border of the scapula on the costal surface. Whereas on the dorsal surface, you have the rhombiadus muscle. So when this contracts, what do you expect? Retraction. OK, 
okay that is the action of rhombus muscles nerve supply is by okay nerve to rhombus muscles are also called the dorsal scapular nerve dorsal scapular nerve so same again the rhombus major then now coming to the these four muscles i will explain them together okay Okay, so four muscles in brief. I will just explain. So one muscle is supraspinatus, okay, which is above the spine of the scapula, and the other is infraspinatus, and the one is teres minor from here going to the greater tubercle. This supraspinatus, infraspinatus, and teres minor. Sit, yes, sit. Okay. So all originating from the scapula and going to the greater tubercle of the humerus. This is the greater tubercle of the humerus. Okay, they are very short muscles. See the origin is nearer to the joint, and even the insertion is also nearer to the joint. Very short muscles, not much muscle fibers. That doesn't have much power. Very short muscles around the joint. See when you look at this, the humerus head and this glenoid fossa or the glenoid cavity. they are very shallow right that means they doesn't have much cavity like your the hip see here that this cup is very deep and the femur femur head is very long and round so so this this is this joint shoulder joint the surfaces are very flat there is a chance of slipping there is no stability here in the shoulder joint you know so because of this because of this this shoulder joint i mean enjoys more flexibility these movements are possible all the movements at the shoulder joint are possible because of the shape of the or the congruence of this articular surfaces whereas if you consider the hip joint the acetabulum is very deep and the head goes totally into that so that means it is for more stability flexibility is less the movements at the hip joint are restricted compared to shoulder joint shoulder joint tenders enjoys more flexibility. flexibility compromising stability yes am i right yes, yes. it compromises the stability because the surfaces are like this yes. okay that's why you need more strength more muscles to give stability to the joint to keep the two articular surfaces together yes. two articular surfaces together so these muscles they act like ligaments rather than muscles if the ligaments are there they doesn't they are not much elastic compared to the muscles okay this main function of these muscles these four muscles subscapularis supraspinatus infraspinatus teres minor you can remember as sit okay so they will be giving stability to the shoulder joint rather than movement of the shoulder joint keeping the two articular surfaces together especially while doing the rotational movements so this movement so when the humerus almost goes out of the glenoid fossa okay then it has to keep these two surfaces together okay so these muscles that's why they act like a cuff around the shoulder joint giving stability to the joint so that's why these muscles are called as rotator cuff rotator cuff muscles what are the rotator cuff muscles subscapularis supraspinatus infraspinatus teres minor remember like sit okay what is their function stabilizes the shoulder stabilizes of the shoulder joint rather than movement okay they are behave like more like a ligament so that is the four muscles okay so you know the attachment it's very easy to understand the attachment then supraspinatus and the infraspinatus are supplied by the suprascapular nerve okay the so, subscapularis muscle is supplied by upper and lower subscapular nerves am i clear so that explains the whole of the what is that uh, uh, rotator cuff muscle supraspinatus infraspinatus then the teres minor and the teres major so, this is the subscapularis sorry okay subscapular these four muscles they are called as rotator cuff muscles so see these are all the four muscles This is the rotator cuff. See here how they are around the shoulder joint. One is above, one is posterior, one is anterior. Okay, so giving more stability to the joint rather than doing the movements. So 
So this is the last muscle that is the teres major. So from the lateral border, the lower aspect of the lateral border of the scapula, going to again the bicipital groove along with the pectoralis major, along with the pectoralis major over the humerus. Okay, this is the teres major muscle. Action is definitely do extension. So now this I will explain in the lab. Okay, the spaces. So all these scapular muscles, when they are going from the scapula to the humerus, they have some spaces between them. So they are called as the. See these scapular muscles, they are going from the scapula to the humerus, crossing the shoulder joint. Okay, so they have some spaces between these muscle heads. They are called as the quadrangular space, upper triangular, and lower triangular spaces. These are the three spaces through which the nerves and vessels will be running. Okay. That I will explain in a lab. So that completes the uh, what is that pectoral and scapular regions. You try to uh, read all the points, the slides today itself. Okay. So we'll have the lab on it maybe on eighth, uh, I guess, eighth or ninth. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Hello.